All right, good afternoon. So we're heading into flu season. And I see a lot of different people now making elderberry syrup. And so I have to talk about elderberry syrup because it is the most trendiest thing on the internet this day and age. And it's being promoted by MLM companies that are looking to make a quick buck to take your friends and put them in the position to then lure your friends into something that is potentially poisonous on a very immunocompromised body. And so a lot of cancer disease and chronic illness comes from a chain reaction events. And it does stem from how your childhood, what practices you, um, what practices you adopted in childhood. So when your parents are holistic and they don't like big pharma, and so they turn to the holistic world and then they go on the internet to ask everybody, what do you do for a cold and flu? And then everybody tells you, oh, apple cider vinegar, oh, kombucha, oh, elderberry syrup, oh, I don't know, honey and turmeric and cinnamon and lemon and, and then garlic and all of this. And I'm just like, you know, and I did play in that world. So I know how that world exists. I played in it. I knew it. I parroted the same mantra when people ask the same question over and over again. What do I do for my kid? And everyone's just like, oh, yeah, elderberry syrup, apple cider vinegar, honey, turmeric. This, And I'm just like, and so now finally that I've done the research on what is the root cause to cancer disease and chronic illness and aging. I can now better articulate. Now, I did articulate a little bit because it came from the standpoint that anything in the holistic world is obviously detrimental, but I mean, it goes deep in that, not just being a prejudice against the holistic world because I'm trying to promote a book, but I was coming from the antibiotic standpoint because of the herbs and then the sugar. And then I became more advanced and learned about chemistry. And I looked at what causes high acidity and then how the holistic industry likes to take two extremes. So they either want you to be highly alkaline or people will practice a high acidic type of lifestyle where they're not worried about what they're eating. They just eat whatever. And then they just deal with their symptoms and get all the different remedies as things start falling apart. So then I started looking at like the actual makeup of the human. Now I went from a very complicated elemental composition of the human body that looked something like this but this, you know, says a lot, but it still has you adopt the compartmentalization of the minerals and the elements. And so this doesn't really tell you a lot. It just says, okay, well, your body's comprised of minerals and water and protein, electrolytes and carbon, you know, and this was like my training type of prop. But now we make it easier for all of you to now finally get why it is that everything in the holistic allopanthic world is detrimental everything the way they go about the practices of actually applying these methodologies to immunocompromised bodies are detrimental so then i actually simplified everything to this okay when i looked up the micro and macro nutrition what nutrients are made up of and then of course what the human body is made up of this is what actually nutrients are that are that are the body needs as well as what the body is made up of the body is made up of fatty acid amino acid and then pro hormones and then minerals now when you look at all of this if you have any kind of imbalance in any one of these these will any imbalances in any one of this will cause you cancer disease and chronic illness okay so then we learned about candida and what is candida it's yeast well okay uh you need yeast because yeast helps metabolize all of the biochemistry okay it's a fungus it is needed it's part of the microflora in your gut and yeast is all over your body yeast is in all biodiversity yeast is used to as a prototype to then test drugs on the market okay and so we learned about yeast and candida in you know in the beginning and then i would say okay well what feeds yeast it's sugar and sugar substitutes so you know in the heavy metals and then um 
yeah, and heavy metals. And then also it causes leaky gut. And then what is leaky gut where the body isn't able to absorb the nutrients to then be able to then fix the weaknesses so you don't get cancer disease and chronic illness. And then we went into the actual jelly juice recipe, the salt, the micro macronutrition, the lactic acid, and the and and the electrolytes. I still see people promoting the elderberry syrup. Okay. Um, and I'm just like, okay, how do I explain it? So it's not just the, the, the herbs that are in there. It's not just the sugar. Yeah, it is the sugar. But we need sugar on our diet. We need acid because sugar is acidic, okay? Um, the probiotics is acidic. So sugar and lactic acid are both acidic. You put those two together in a drink, that is a, that is a recipe for disaster, especially on a body that is already immunocompromised, okay? So this is why I then talked about the kombucha and why kombucha and apple cider vinegar is not the type of probiotic you should be drinking because that's like basically drinking straight up acid. Apple cider vinegar and kombucha are basically lactic acid and sugar because it's fermented sugar. So that is a cesspool. That is a recipe for hello, no, 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 causing more cancer and aging because guess what? When you feed the candida, the sugar, the sugar substitutes like, like stevia, okay, aspartame, or aspartamate, or aspartame, or neotame, and all that stuff. When you're trying to substitute your organic sugar, your sugar, for then all of these sugar substitutes, it still contributes to the high acids of the body. And then it also feeds the candida, which then punches holes in your gut, and then it causes malabsorption. So giving a child who's already immunocompromised because they're already... People are, are reproducing on traumatized bodies, passing along generational weaknesses, and the kid gets sick. Watch all your grandchildren and children this flu season. They're going to get very sick because of the different viruses that are out there. And then guess what? These holistic parents are going to ply their kids with elderberry syrup. What's in elderberry syrup? You can't eat elderberry syrup raw. You know why? Because it's it's poisonous. It has cyanide and all these different types of uh, elements that will actually kill a person so what do they do they then melt it down they heat it up and add so much sugar and they add all these different spices honey and, and 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 cinnamon and and lemon okay and a whole bunch of sugar oh and sambuca like some kind of licorice that is so ethic or they'll add stevia to it and so on a kid who already has leaky gut because they're already sick, when somebody is sick, they're not absorbing the nutrients correctly. And so they are now open for the different viruses and the body is trying to adapt to that changing environment of these new viruses. And the body is now mucusing, trying to release the excess. And then the kid is sick. And then what does the parents do? They go give them something that's so full of sugar so full of sugar that actually causes more leaky gut. It feeds the candy, it punches more holes in that kid's stomach, and the kid now has malabsorption. And then guess what? Then they have lactic acidosis. You know what the, the root, what is the root cause of cancer disease and chronic illness? Lactic acidosis. And that is where diabetes happens. That is where pancreatic lung cancer, all the cancers come from is lactic acidosis because you're not bringing in a countering force called electrolytes okay you're not bringing in an, a you're not having the nutrition be absorbed to then fight off the, the 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 excess elements that the body can handle at that point in time because when you when a kid is growing they're weak okay they're already weak because they're in developmental stage and when you weaken their body more because of the way in which you handle their cancer disease and chronic illness in the flu season is now going to set the stage for them to then finally trigger some kind of major issue in their future. Okay. And so people who are promoting elderberry syrup and doing it with MLMs because it's trendy don't realize it actually is causing more harm to the kids and their own family because people are already dealing with Lyme disease, are already dealing with aging, already dealing with, with um, heart issues, lung issues, uh, brain issues, all types of issues. And then you add in something as highly acidic, 
so much lactic acid and so much acid because of the sugar because you already have imbalances, punching more holes in your gut, feeding the candida, causing more malabsorption, and then guess what? You're going to be triggering some kind of event like cancer, and then the body is going to do a, a biochemical triage and steal minerals to try to keep your, your vital organs going, and then this is where the train has left the station. This is a chain reaction, a domino reaction, because people fall into the trendy shit all over the holistic industry everywhere. Yes, Molly, yes. Lactic acid, future triggers. Let's stop the trendy stuff. Well done. Yes. That is what all of these kombuchas and the apple cider vinegars and the elderberry syrup. And then the, the, the holistic market then lures weak people into their, they ensnare them into their web of, of ooh, easy money because people don't want to really work for their money in a way that's ethical so they're willing to sacrifice their friends and family by saying hey i got a protocol for you i got a, a drink for you for the flu season oh i'm gonna make all of this elderberry syrup in my backyard or wherever and i'm gonna sell it all over the internet don't you think that's illegal making your own elderberry syrup and then selling it to your friends on the internet or to your family or whoever causing then more cancer so, I mean, I did post the, uh, the diseases associated with lactic acidosis, okay? And here it is. I mean, alcoholic ketoacidosis, anemia, liver disease, diabetes, mellitus, bowel ischemia, ischemia, severe iron deficiency. Pancreatitis, which then contributes to pancreatic cancer, malignancy, leukemia, lymphoma, lung cancer, infection, renal failure. I mean, lactic acidosis, when you actually take a bunch of probiotics as well as a bunch of sugar, and you also add in like uh, um, herbs and other types of, of additives like honey and stevia and all that stuff, you're now taking a highly acidic drink, okay? And so um, let me read more if I can. And so, yeah, diabetes and, and people who are alcoholics are also going to be experiencing lactic acidosis. All right, let me... Da, 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 da. I'm just looking at this, I'm trying to figure out this site here. Oh, I see. Because here's the thing, you need to have a balance because it's not just the acids, because there's fatty acids, there is amino acids, so there's proteins, and there's fat in your on your body, and that's like all the different acids. Then you have the nutrients, okay, the pro-hormones. So the nutrients in the J-juice, it supports the hormones to regulate them, to make sure they're firing when they're supposed to. And then the minerals also help regulate the systems of the body, and that's in the cabbage and kale, as well as in the pink Himalayan salt. So, um, all right, well, that's fine. For some reason, I thought it would give me more. But that's okay. You can look up on your own the different diseases that are associated with lactic acidosis. And it's all the cancers because when somebody is like in hospice, now this is for that guy that passed away that everyone wants to tie J juice to, okay? He was drinking massive amounts of pineapple juice. He was drinking straight up acid on a body that was already out the door. When you're in hospice, the system can't do anything for you. So when you're applying somebody with either elderberry syrup, pineapple juice, fruit juice, any kind of sugary drink, whether it's fruit, organic sugar, stevia, aspartame or aspartame or neotame or any of those, um, what else, uh, agave syrup, maple syrup, you're adding to the acidic, the lactic acidosis, which then feeds the uh well it destroys cells 
and it feeds the candida, which then doesn't allow you to absorb any nutrition, and then it allows the cancer viruses to take over. So guess what? Bruce Wilmot died from the fact that he had cancer, and then he kept feeding his body the fruit sugars, and then people are giving their kids elderberry syrup, causing more um, uh, leaky gut, so they cannot absorb the food supply correctly, and then guess what? It paves the way for more weaknesses, and then you're going to see children triggering cancer disease and chronic illness at an earlier age because the way the parents are applying these methodologies to their cancer disease and chronic illness and flu season and flu season is especially the worst times because we have so many flu viruses being passed around and then you see everybody on in these holistic groups that are selling their mlms selling their homemade elderberry syrup causing more harm to their friends Though I know it's not intentional to try to cause harm, but the thing is, is ignorance does not absolve you from that responsibility. Ignorance is not an excuse in the day and age of information. Oh, but people will claim ignorance and they'll come upon my information and completely ignore it because you know why? It's easier to sell your friends something quick and easy and it may destroy them later because really when you think about it, when someone says, oh yeah, my symptoms disappeared, you're like God, but then they trigger cancer down the road or it makes their cancer weaker or their disease or i'm sorry it makes their cancer stronger or their disease stronger but they'll never make the connection that's because the 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 elderberry syrup contributed to the factors of the acceleration of their disease oh but they, they won't you know they won't say anything about that and they won't even mention that because there isn't that direct correlation but oh believe me they'll be like oh well you know they're around somebody that's sick and they'll go you got me sick no you have a weakness that you should have been able not to even have, you should be asymptomatic on a strong body. Okay. So, um, so yes. So when you have already, if you're utilizing sugars and elderberry syrups and kombuchas and apple cider vinegars and probiotics, straight up probiotics, not, not the J juice, but straight up probiotics that are made with sugar or vinegar or milk, you're contributing to the lactic acidosis. What is the lactic acidosis? Um, what is the, its uh, countering force? It is the electrolytes. What happens is, is when you have lactic acidosis, okay, the body is going to go into biochemical triage and steal the electrolytes and try to deal with that lactic acidosis. But if you have depletion of your mineral reserves, then that's when cancer disease and chronic illness then start being triggered because you are now depleting your mineral reserves. It's almost gone. And that's why you see people go into stage one, stage two, stage three cancer because they have lactic acidosis going on and they don't, they're not bringing in the electrolytes because they're afraid of the salt. These people who are afraid of the salt are actually causing more harm. People who are afraid of J juice are causing harm to cancer patients and then everybody in their world. When you understand what is the counter force to lactic acidosis, it is the electrolytes and the micro macronutrition. I'm not saying that, okay, you're going to do the, you know, the, the elderberry syrup and then go take a bunch of salt and put it all over your food. And you're going to like, nah, that's how you're going to counter it. No, there's a whole chemical bonding process, whole chemical bonding process with the J juice that gives you electrolytes and the micro macronutrition and also the lactic acid. That the body does need because that's part of the elemental composition of the human body. This is a human body right here, and this is what's in J juice. Okay, so um, so yeah, the people who are selling elderberry syrup are really basically killing off their friends and family because it's highly acidic, and you can't even people can't even eat raw elderberries. You know why you can't eat raw elderberries? Because it's full of cyanide and something else. I mean, what did I put? The dangers of elderberry syrup. The uncooked berries, leaves, barks, and roots of the elderberry plant contains the chemicals lectin and cyanide, which can cause nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Cooking the berries and seeds will remove the cyanide. However, then they're also added in to make elderberry syrup massive amounts of sugar. So you're contributing to the leaky gut, causing malabsorption and then triggering cancer. And so when you go to the hospital because you're so dehydrated, guess what they give you at the hospital? They give you electrolytes. They give you sodium chloride with glucose and water. 
and they're in these little bags that are IV bags. And some people are that sick where they have to go through at least four bags in four hours because they're that dehydrated. When somebody does J juice, water is part of the protocol. And when you get thirsty, you drink water. And it's not just the salt, it's the water, the lactic acid, and the micro macronutrition and the electrolytes. Electrolytes does not cause dehydration because it's not just salt, it's a whole chemical process. So be very wary of all of those MLMers who are selling you elderberry syrup. And what's another highly acidic type of thing that practices that people do? Alcohol, beer, wine, fermented fruit. That I don't drink alcohol. I don't drink kombucha because it's highly acidic. I have no desire for kombucha, no desire for alcohol, no desire for beer, no desire for anything that's so highly acidic. When I do, you know, balance out my nutrients, I do the J juice, I'll eat some pasta, maybe have a donut here and there, eat some, I mean, I'll do complex carbohydrates. Sometimes I'll add sugar to my cereal. And then I drink the JJ's juice because it has the electrolytes. And then my body's already fixed the weaknesses from the past, present, and future. So my body's already are, is able to metabolize and then, you know, absorb what it needs and release the excess. But those that are already compromised and they're, and they're taking all these different remedies, such as elderberry syrup, are going to compound their issues. Compound their issues on an exponential basis. Because imagine doing that every single time that you get sick. And people are having the hell of a time right now with the flu. They're having the stomach flu, they're having the head flu, the colds, all of that. And guess what they're doing? They are drinking massive amounts of elderberry syrup, causing more malabsorption, causing more of an acidic environment, causing lactic acidosis. And then guess what? They are paving the way for cancer disease and chronic illness, which is already in their genetic line because look at the parents. Look what's in the predispositions. When you're already predisposed to cancer, doing the elderberry syrup is only going to accelerate that process. When you already have weaknesses in your genetic line, it's only going to compound your weaknesses. So when people are suffering from Lyme disease or suffering from weaknesses from, from different you know, accidents and issues and obesity and, and malnutrition and all of that, and then they're taking something that's highly acidic that causes lactic acidosis, and they're not bringing in countering forces, oh my God. People are having a hell of a time trying to survive this lifetime. I see it in my own high school crowd. A lot of my people I used to go to school with are dropping. At, in, right, right now, we're like we're 44, 43, 45. I'm in my mid 40s. This is this is the this the the generation or the, the the age group that is the backbone of our society, and we are dropping like flies. Not me, but the people around me that are in their 30s, 40s, and even 20s. But I think, you know, somebody in my world triggered an autoimmune disorder in their 30s. And, you know, they had, you know, a drug problem and then they're continuously addicted to sugar. So they have lactic acidosis, sugar addiction. And then already they had the sustained weakness of, of lupus in their body. And then guess what? Their practices, their practices have then contributed to the acceleration of their getting that autoimmune disorder. And then now they think they're doing like cannabis as well as uh, chemotherapy, like uh, chemotherapy pills, like light chemotherapy. And so when you're applying aggressive elements, singular aggressive elements, such as chemotherapy or cannabis, it contributes to then the degradation because you're not allowing your body to heal, you're trying to turn off the idiot lights so you don't feel anything, and then one day you're gonna lose, you're gonna lose your fuel, you're gonna lose your steam. And then you start seeing the body progressively break down, losing their eyesight, losing the hearing, losing so much of their, you know, their 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 integumentary system. Okay, the wrinkles start happening and and it's just it's a domino effect. And then Gloria said, I got something either allergies or a cold yesterday, and I drank the JJ, stepped it off. Today I'm a whole lot better. Great. Yeah, well, yeah, you're still healing. So you're going to be catching stuff, and then your body's going to go through its processes because you're still weak. 
But one day you're not going to catch anything. One day you're going to be around these viruses and be asymptomatic. And then it's actually going to then propel you to the next level of evolution. And it's going to probably give you more, um, give you more uh, uh, revelations. But Michael Lowe, it's not just chemo is a death trap. Elderberry syrup is a death trap. Cannabis is a death trap. Everything in the holistic world is a death trap, Michael Lowe. It's not just chemo. Chemo, chemo has helped people who were in stage one cancer and they did light chemo and then they were able to survive. So it depends on how many mineral reserves you have. And some of you are already lacking. So let's say, Michael, you have a lot of mineral reserves, but you still contract a cancer. Okay. Well, you do chemo, a light chemo, and then you, and you kill off the cancer. Then you'll survive and you have enough reserves to keep your heart, lungs, keep your vital organs going. And then you can keep living. But some people are deficient. They come in already at a deficit of their mineral reserves and then they apply chemo on them. And so the body's going into biochemical triage, trying to then steal the reserves to keep the heart, lungs and all the vital organs going. But the person is degrading. Sugar, what is, hold on a second. Sugar, what is the problem? Oh my God. What? 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 Sugar, it's okay. It's okay, sugar. Stop barking at these animals. Don't worry about it. It's just a rabbit. Come on down if you want. Hang out. Come on, sugar. Come on. Come down. Come on. It's okay. Okay, so people already coming at a deficit because they came in already mineral deficient and then they contract cancer and then they apply chemo and it robs them of more of the minerals. And so that's why certain people die, but not everybody dies from chemo. Okay, Michael Lowe, if you ever happen to get cancer and you try to apply cannabis, that will do a number on you if you already have issues. But if you don't have as many issues, you would survive the chemo as well as the cannabis. If you already have a bunch of mineral reserves, you'll survive both chemo and cannabis relative to what you choose. So chemo and cannabis is only detrimental to those that are already at a major deficit. But those activists out there that don't understand that the holistic industry is just as detrimental as the, as the allopathic industry will then play the extremes and not realize they're both one of the same. The holistic industry is no different than the allopathic. Cannabis is no different than chemo. But I bet you Michael Lowe will never talk smack about cannabis. You know why? Because he's probably holistic. Doesn't realize they're both the same thing. I, how I know is because you've only mentioned the chemo. But I know people who, who did chemo a long time ago, but they're from Ohio. They had an issue. They have very strong bones, hard bones, highly mineralized bones, and they survived the chemo. Go figure on that. So chemo isn't deadly. It's only deadly on a body that's already at a deficit. Okay. And so when somebody is already at a deficit and they're taking elderberry syrup, which also contributes to lactic acidosis, this is where we pave the way for our kids to then trigger cancer disease and chronic illness, rapid aging, as well as behavioral problems. Because we don't understand that it's about balancing out everything here balancing out the fatty acids, the amino acids, the pro-hormones, and the minerals, okay? And so you have to deal with generational weaknesses because you're in debt. People are trying to spend their minerals that they have no business spending, and then guess what? The weaknesses are still getting weaker and weaker and weaker, and then one day they're going to be mineral depleted and then try to go get chemo or cannabis, and it doesn't work because they're already way behind the eight ball eight ball they're way at a deficit so then they're in hospice trying to now try as or might try to apply every remedy out there i mean i have this person in my world that's dealing with pancreatic cancer and dealing with chemotherapy he already has a deficit because the guy's already slim from california so california people are very weak in california and got pancreatic cancer and now is going through aggressive chemo. So this is where Michael Lowe is correct, but he's already at a deficit, okay? But some of here in Ohio doing chemo would survive it because they are highly mineralized, very strong here in Ohio. But some in California who already came at a deficit would not survive. And he's dealing with 
the, the adverse effects of the chemotherapy and he's trying to apply the cannabis at the same time. That's double whammy. And doing the fentanyl because he's basically immune to the morphine. And I'm listening to the video going like, oh my God, I can't listen to anymore. This is, this is, a, but I, he's someone that I know, but I can't introduce this because we have mutual friends that already think that JJ is, is the devil. So there's no way I can introduce this and actually offer this because he's already really far gone. If he tried to, if he glommed on to the hope of JJ and, and he didn't like the feelings because he's trying to get rid of the pain, that's his whole goal is to get rid of the pain. There's no way he can handle the JJ. So I have to watch this and be like, fuck. So he, He's more of an example of what not to do than me try to go and save him. Some people are going to be an example of what not to do, you guys. Don't try to save everybody out there. Believe me, I, I've had to really hold myself back from sending him a message and sending him a video of one of my stuff about chemo and about cannabis and about cancer and, and all the Jilly Juice protocol. He knows, he, he knows who I am. I mean, he, we have mutual friends. They've introduced this. But I'm not going to press the issue. He's already too far gone. He's trying to get rid of the pain. And when you're trying to get rid of the pain, there's no way you can handle the J juice. No way indeed. And so this is where, you know, we have to now look at our people around us as lessons of what to do and what not to do. And that's it. Not have any emotional reaction around it, not be tripping out about it. But it is what it is. Just acknowledge it. And then change your belief system. If you believe that people should not die even today or tomorrow, then understand the whole point of JJ and live it indefinitely and understand that you have to maintain the balance of the fatty acids, amino acids, the pro-hormones, and the minerals, and the JJ supports every single one of those. Okay, I know this is all gobbledygook, but this is basically the formula, the, the recipe of JJ. Sodium chloride dissolved in water, that's your trace minerals and your energizing force, plus then the lactic acid your body needs, plus then the micro and macronutrition from the cabbage and kale broken down to a pre-digested state. And then you gotta deal with the pain from the past, present, and future. And stop trying to spend all of your minerals before you actually earned spending them. You need to fix the past issues. And if you're aging, which most of you are right now are aging, that is the deficits, that is the sins of the father. You're taking on your generation's predispositions, your generation, your parents' generation, and your grandparents' generation. You're taking on all of their weaknesses, and it's causing the aging process. And then people normalize it. Oh, yeah, death is great. Death is great. You'll go to heaven or something. No, I'm not mainstreaming death. I'm not mainstreaming the afterlife. Not at all. Because we can live on this earth indefinitely. Instead of looping and starting over again every so many hundreds of years and rewriting history over and over, just like when people loop in the same argument over and over again, oh my God, Democrat, Republican, chemo versus cannabis, holistic versus allopathic, and it's the same, same looping. At some point, we have to get off that train wreck or get off that hamster wheel and start applying the right formula to life and deal with the pain, past, present, and future. Not try to anesthetize it, not trying to justify that you need to do your drugs or promote some afterlife thing. But no, say, hey, life is precious because life is precious. Why people want to, to die at some point, whether it's now or tomorrow, is beyond me. You know, time is a construct. What you do today is going to determine what your future is going to be. And then when you start, when you apply these elderberry syrups and these drugs and the pills, power supplements, that's compound mutations, compound, not so much compound mutations, but compound uh, issues. You're compounding your deficits because you're feeding, you're feeding the, the fungus that keeps punching holes in your gut, then it not allows you to absorb. And then what happens is the body steals minerals to deal with the weaknesses to keep your vital organs going until there is nothing left. And then this is where people start disintegrating. The aging process is the gradual disintegration of the person because they're not absorbing the minerals in their environment. Okay? So you can play the, oh, God, chemo is a death. But no, what really is the death is ignorance. Ignorance is a death trap. Chemo is appropriate on a body that's able to handle 
that methodology. And if you come in at a mineral deficit, chemo would not be appropriate. Even cannabis, but see, when you have an aggressive cancer like pancreatic cancer, they have to apply all of the guns because some of that, the pancreatic cancer is so aggressive, you have to apply the chemo. But then you then have to then pay the piper. You are paying now in your minerals as well as paying in your currency as far as the, the money. Because I'm sure people are getting GoFundMe accounts because they're trying to pay for all of their procedures and they're robbing themselves of minerals. But cannabis, the same thing, you're paying so much in CBD oil and so much in all of these, these, these holistic remedies and their body's still being robbed of the minerals because it's not applying the right you know, methodologies and the person is still degrading. Yeah, they beat cancer, but, but they were going to anyways, no matter what, one round of chemo could have uh, taken that away with their one round of, of cannabis if they already came into the table with already a huge amount of reserves. So some of you have saved, some of you have come from great genetic lines where your predecessor saved you minerals. They weren't depleting themselves. When you look at some of the Asian countries out there and they're so slim, like myself, and my bones are they're not soft, but then I'm feeling my husband's bones and they're freaking hard. Have you ever felt somebody's bones where they're so hard that when you feel their knee, it's like, oh my God, that's some, that is a major insurance policy. There are some people that are so strong that they can withstand the chemo, the cannabis, all that stuff if they ever had cancer. But remember, you know, it, it, if you don't replenish those minerals, then at some point, they are going to die because more is leaving. The body is absorbing and repairing. It's all mathematics, guys. But you have to understand how to read the data out there. And so the elderberry syrup is the wrong formula to apply on a body, especially during cold and flu season. Especially. So anyways. But yeah, you know, people do their people do the thing, and then yeah, I mean, and and, and you're gonna watch people drop like flies, and you gotta get used to it, guys. Some of you really want to help your friends that have SIBO or have all these issues, and the only thing that you can do is create videos, talk from a very intelligent point of view. Don't ram this information down anybody's throat. People will have to come to you because if you start proselytizing J juice and you try to ram it down someone's throat who is just on the fence and having a lot of issues, guess what? You're promising them something that you can't deliver because they're the one that's going to have to do it. They're going to have to deal with the pain. And let's say they can't deal with the pain. And then let's say they're already at a major, major, like, you know, uh, aggressive point where, you know, they, they could die any day. They will blame you for that, for their death or for their, for the, for this acceleration of their, of their cancer. So you want people to go to you. You want to put the information out there, give people the opportunity to explore it. Let them come to you, let them read my book, let them watch my videos, and let them make the choice. Because at some point in the, in the end, when they finally make the choice, they made the choice. It wasn't because you were hounding them. And then come from the standpoint, this is a biochemical, this is a chemical bonding process. This is not just probiotics or lactic acid. This is not just salt. This is not just the micro macronutrition. This is a chemical bonding process that is aligned with this chemical bonding process, which is your body. All of these is basically, this is your body. This is what you're made up of, you guys. Okay? That's how we can basically narrow down the human body to this. And then that's where the J-juice is completely aligned with that. And you have to deal with the pain. So. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.